Ladies and gentlemen, that's for Gaming Today.com video. We're going to be discussing a lot of AMD news, actually, because a lot of things have popped up over the last day or so, some concerning Zen and some concerning a new initiative that AMD are taking to counter NVIDIA's GameWorks, known as GPU Open, which is an open source SDK which essentially mirrors a lot of the functionality of GameWorks and some more besides. But first of all, we're going to discuss Zen, because I know many of you are clamping at the bit, chomping at the bit, whatever you want to say of the bit, regarding news on the whole Zen situation. So as I'm sure you're aware, the basic synopsis of Zen at the moment is that it is planned to succeed in high-end desktops and servers. Essentially, Zen is not just going to be one processor and that's it. It's going to be A, scalable, and B, it's going to, I guess you could say, have a series of successes. We know in some instances, well, one instance, that will be known as Zen Plus, which will obviously have some improvements over the original architecture. But Lisa Su, who is, of course, AMD's president and CEO, has said, and I quote, this was, by the way, at the um, traditional 19th Annual Technology, Media and Telecoms Conference, uh, and the quote is, I think Zen is the first of multi-year strategy, so you know, again, you asked me, what are my thoughts on around the company? I think AMD, at our core, we are a high-performance computing company, and so you know, Zen is a scratch arch from scratch architectural design. For those of us who know it takes a lot of work, it's a multi-year effort, but I think it's a multi-year effort that we can see coming to fruition. And so what data center customers want from us is, one, we are about to be competitive, and two, we can offer a long-term roadmap. And so that's what we've really talked about with Zen Plus. Zen follows on. So as you know, a three to five year view of what's needed to be successful in the data center. The chief financial officer of AMD actually iterated these same sentiments. His name is Devinder Kumar. And he said that he had been with AMD for a long time, but Initially, the company had managed really great strides in the data, data center market. And in fact, as someone who runs websites and kind of handles some of that stuff for companies, at the time, you'll notice that, and this was a lot before cloud and all of that stuff, so primarily you were often dealing with, you were buying a server instance, let's say it was a Pentium 4 or a, whatever it happened to be at the time. And Op Opteron was a pretty big name out there. And in fact, according to him, they'd managed to capture about 25% of the market share, but since then, this market share has eroded steadily over time, which is not obviously what they want. Now it's under 1%, which doesn't make any difference at all, really, to the company's bottom line. So what he says now is because we have this reuse approach for our course, you will see Zen calls first of all in high-end desktops, and then they will switch these to servers for our overall product standpoint. Essentially, if all of this is to be believed, for desktop users, this is really great news. It means that an AM4 desktop platform will theoretically mean that you're going to be able to plug in a Zen Plus or what have you, and you're going to be absolutely good to go, which is absolutely amazing news, at least in my opinion. Because, you know, the whole, you need a new motherboard, you need a new motherboard, you need a new motherboard thing gets really old. And Intel, of course, have been criticised. It's not to say that Skylake, for sake of argument, hasn't improved things. Obviously, Skylake has shifted to DDR4. We've seen better integration or better bandwidth across the entire spectrum of devices which are attachable to the system. Obviously, for example, we've seen M2 and all of that, and even USB 3.1, which is all great, but it's also not ideal. What I think would be nice is if the, essentially, you could, yes, get a new motherboard, which would offer you these new shiners, but you could also stick with what you've got, which is possibly the route AMD are going to go, but obviously it's a little early to know for now. So, I did mention that there were two pieces of news, the second one being what is known as GPU open. So essentially, I guess to give it the elevator pitch, which is obviously the short, sweet version of it, it's an open source tools, graphical effects, and libraries. So as many of you are aware, NVIDIA have been criticized by not just AMD, but gamers as a whole, because Gameworks has been... It's basically a black box. It's really difficult to get into and actually tweak 
So oftentimes the developers have had to just kind of go with it, which means it can lead to some performance issues. Performance issues. Performance issues. Performance issues. Now, to be fair to Nvidia, they have improved things over successive months, but they are still under that criticism. So what Nvidia have decided is they want to. Uh, sorry, what AMD have decided. You can tell I've come back from work and tired, can't you? But what AMD have decided is they want to go open source. This is very similar, of course, to what they've done in the past with other uh, graphics libraries and APIs, and it, it's kind of the AMD way. It's a great, it, it's a great option. I like the open source option as a whole. I think it's a great movement. The benefit, primarily, of open source is that Bob down the road can work on this. You know, any company can contribute and work on an open standard, which essentially means that development is kickstarted. In theory, it would mean, let's say, OpenGL, which is kind of an open standard, and other APIs would be absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunately, it, it can be difficult to get the industry as a whole interested in them because, well, we'll talk about more about that in a moment. So let's discuss a little bit about GameWorks, shall we? Because we all know what GameWorks is to a degree, but in GameWorks has a lot of cool stuff. There, there is there is no doubt about it. And I am someone that doesn't hate GameWorks, which is kind of weird because some people absolutely despise it. I'm kind of in the middle. I like GameWorks as a theory, as like, this is pretty awesome. But I think oftentimes NVIDIA are just too protective of it. And I do understand the reasoning behind that. But I don't think it benefits anyone, um, and that's my opinion. It doesn't benefit the PC. It benefits NVIDIA's, I guess you could say, uh, I guess you could say it benefits NVIDIA's portfolio, but it also serves no one who isn't an NVIDIA owner, and it certainly doesn't really benefit a lot of games developers, at least in my opinion. And even NVIDIA gamers, it doesn't really benefit them, because oftentimes when you've got these... When you've got something that doesn't affect all of the market, the problem is developers are more likely to not include it. And one of the things that I've really loved is hardware physics with NVIDIA. I'm actually a real fan of it. I'm kind of a whore. Uh, there was actually a time when I bought an NVIDIA GPU just for hardware physics, and I know there wasn't that many games which really supported it, but I just really loved the look of it. But we all know that a lot of applications just didn't really benefit. But some some game works doesn't require an Nvidia graphics card we all know that anyway however let's let's get more into this so game works obviously is cloth simulation hair obviously fibers it's a little bit like in uh, AMD's tress effects which came before it both are not perfect in terms of what they do but they're pretty damn excellent if you want to see if Tress FX even works across consoles, obviously with the GCN architecture, but it does work on NVIDIA graphics cards. We've got depth of field effects, face works, which obviously works more on high skin, detail, high quality skin, GI works, global illumination, realism. There is an awful lot of lighting uh, in NVIDIA stuff, including HBAO plus um, and soft shadows, which combined with the GI works help to illuminate scenes in much more realistic and uh, pretty ways. Turbulence which is for smoke and fog, physics interactions can work really well. However, AMD have provided a great framework themselves. When TressFX was released way back in 2013, it's actually one of the more popular things that I covered when we took a look at the actual I guess you could say the SDK, the actual interface and the hardware demo. Check it out if you want, just by searching uh, TressFX on the channel. And you can see that even if you go to AMD's website, there's a lot of stuff they've got. Uh, whether it's anti-aliasing, whether it's TressFX, all of this stuff is pretty awesome. Unfortunately, it's also not packaged. Essentially, developers have to really integrate it into the games themselves. So while they do have access to the source code, it's not necessarily easy. Um, so what AMD have decided to do is to go the opposite direction uh, in terms of the restrictions of NVIDIA. Now, essentially what they're allowing is an MIT open source license. This means that you can do 
anything with this um, groundwork, with this framework. You can take that code, you can alter it, improve it, and then sell it, and it essentially will allow developers or larger studios or smaller in studios to actually work on this thing and put the effort into it and I guess you could say just do crazy things because it means that a lot of studios could say hey you know what we're gonna take this and we're gonna make a plugin which is gonna work really well for lighting or we're gonna make a plugin which is based on this framework and we're gonna make tress effects work really well with these situations or we're gonna make we're gonna take this lighting and we're gonna have a plugin that looks absolutely phenomenal let's say with cloth uh, and you've got these really bizarre situations but and I think you know as artists as developers as coders as software producers studios are gonna to want to take note of this now when one considers that the GPU open resources are going to be available on GitHub, uh, that's G-I-T-H-U-B, of course, in January, the game graphics resources are just absolutely phenomenal. You've got a lot of TressFX stuff, of course, which is TressFX 3.0, which is the latest iteration, which you're going to find in uh, games like Tomb Raider, which TressFX has gone under quite a lot of changes since I first looked at it, uh, to be fair, the, the hair is looking a lot more realistic now, it doesn't have that that crazy, that crazy look, which even found itself in the original Tomb Raider. You've got improvements to shadow effects, and all, most of those are DirectX 11, but you've also got some DirectX 12 samples, AMD graphics services, rapid fire SDK, fire renderer SDK, liquid VR, which, pretty nice. Liquid VR, of course, is AMD's middleware for virtual reality. We all know that NVIDIA are jumping on that as well. Liquid VR could actually be kind of cool because, essentially speaking, there are problems, of course, primarily with latency with virtual reality. So the idea of having a, the, uh, the ability to shift some of that to compute and to reduce the, the latency and input between your... Between your... Um, between your imp between your reactions and be able to warp the image as required is absolutely phenomenal. That's not the only thing, of course, that AMD are pushing. The other one would be compute, and GPU Open also has libraries for that as well. Now, remember, compute can be for anything and everything. It could be anything from video rendering to I need to calculate the mass of this black hole all the way down to something more mundane or fun like I need to create physics in my game and essentially there are a lot of languages that can be used to do this stuff um, but right now they are getting C++ running on GPUs at about the same speed as OpenCL what AMD are trying to do is virtually the same thing uh, with gaming so we're so we're told so essentially libraries and SDKs are going to be open and then you can freely modify them naturally most of this stuff will also transition quite well to Linux Linux as you know pretty much lives and dies by the community without support without people putting up patches without putting uh, work into the applications it just doesn't work and we all know that steam machines are of course based upon linux as well and that's not by the only stretch the only things that are but steam machines valve obviously are putting a lot of work into this so amd are going to release an open source driver it is going to be called amd gpu now what this basically means is that once again you're going to easily be able to work and modify the driver based on different distributions and different requirements and all of that stuff and it could be really cool. It means that people who are making Steam machines or Linux could recompile it specifically for that. It means theoretically you're going to be able to do an awful lot of stuff with their software. Now this could bite them in the ass of course because technically speaking Nvidia could go oh that's kind of tasty but I, I really love the philosophy. Perhaps that's me being a bit of an idealist. I love the philosophy behind this. I love the idea of an open source technology. Because in my mind, it's like, well, that's just going to make things work faster. 
we need to progress faster. There's a lot of areas and games which look amazing, but then just something breaks the realism. To take, for the sake of argument, Tomb Raider, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, it looks amazing. No one can dispute that, but then you look at this piece of foliage when Lara's hiding in a bush, and it's like... The foliage is clipping through her, or the foliage doesn't move realistically, or something like that. And some of this, I'm not going to lie to you, is down to GPU performance or CPU performance. It's expensive, and that's even on a high-end PC. But it's also... It's also the language. It's also the software to render it. It's the compute language to render it. It's, you know, all these little efficiencies and... Multiple people working on this means you're going to find more efficient ways to either render it or calculate it or doing whatever you need to. And that, in my opinion, is just a good thing. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.